Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm very excited because we're talking about the Batman. You know it, I know it, let's talk about it. This is a non-spoiler review, I'm not going to be spoiling anything. However, I will have a spoiler video come later. You know how these things go, so stick around for that. So let's get the question straight out of the way. Is this the best Batman movie of all time? No, it's not the best. It's going to take multiple viewings because the film is three hours. And I knew this going in. I was ready for three hours of Batman. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, but the pacing really holds this movie back. Okay, so I don't think it's the best Batman movie, but it's at least good. There's a lot of hype and speculation. Yes, it is very good. You've seen other reviews. You've heard other things. It is a good movie. How is Robert Pattinson as Batman? He's good. I wouldn't say he's perfect or the best, but it's good. Usually to portray Batman, you have to portray three different people. You've got party boy billionaire Bruce Wayne that sells that he's, you know, this party animal and a playboy during the day. You've also got the real Bruce Wayne and what he actually feels underneath. And then you've got Batman to play on top of that. This is the first time we've seen a Batman where two of those get thrown out the window because this is just Batman. This is the most Batman screen time in a Batman film I think we've ever had. Because sequences with Bruce Wayne are kind of far and in between. This is just about Batman. It very much reminds me of animated Batman movies. You know who this is. Let's just get straight into it. And cutting a lot of the fat, like the origin story that we already know, you think this movie would go along much quicker, but the pacing is really where this movie struggles because you think it ends but it keeps going and I want it to keep going but it's very exhaustive. What bugs me is that when I buy this movie how many times am I going to just be able to throw it on because it's three hours I'm going to have to really sit there and invest myself in it. There's definitely 20 to 30 minutes of this movie that could have been cut or not cut because a lot of the things that are here are important, but there's sequences that could have been rewritten to go much quicker than they did. This movie feels like an expensive six-part miniseries because of the way that it's structured and how long it goes. It feels like you're binging a whole show in one sitting. So despite how good the quality is and how masterfully done each sequence is one after another, you get quite exhausted. And this is coming from someone that loves Batman. I live for Batman. From the 60s to the animated series to the Dark Knight trilogy to Keaton's movies to the Batman TV show to Batman Beyond all of it. I love all of it. Except maybe Batman and Robin. My favorite part about this movie has to be the aesthetic and Gotham itself because the atmosphere is here. It is constantly a gloomy dreary Gotham that's raining and it very much feels like an Arkham game in that sense. You rarely, if ever, see sunlight in this movie. It's just glimpses of dawn and sunset, but it's all at night time. This movie is two stories woven together. The first one is The Long Halloween. There's twists and turns that are ripped directly from The Long Halloween. So if you've seen that, you kind of know what you're in for. And the other thing is the movie Seven. Take the movie Seven and replace Brad Pitt with Batman and that is the movie. Matt Reeves, who went out and made the movie, wanted it to be like Seven and Zodiac, and he has accomplished that mission. Another thing that I love about this movie is that it's a singular vision, and you can see that from start to finish that this is exactly what Matt Reeves wanted to do. You know, you've got Tim Burton's Batman, you've got Christopher Nolan's Batman, they all have their distinctive feels and they're allowed to do what they want with the character. And now we have that again. It doesn't feel like there's any studio interference. It doesn't feel like they put any restriction on Matt Reeves and that's why it is three hours. Is this movie for everyone? I don't think so. It's a neo-noir detective thriller kind of movie. And think of Seven, it's not like there's a lot of action sequences, but a lot more puzzles and trying to solve what's really going on. Don't get me wrong, there's action, in particular a sequence with the Batmobile, which you'll see when you watch it. That sequence is a standout. There, there is action in this movie. But it feels like after a big sequence you might have 40 minutes of... What are we doing now? It was always important and it kept me engaged, I just know that it's not going to work for everyone. A lot of this movie worked for me, but there's like 20 nitpicks and when you have about 20 of them, they all start to stack up and take the film down for you. Robert Pattinson only has to portray one of the three characters that he's doing and it's different, but it feels like 
he's giving a very one-dimensional performance then. He does it really well. I don't see Robert Pattinson, I don't see Sparkling Vampire, Twilight Boy. I just see Batman, which is fantastic. He's doing it exactly how he's been told to do it. But he's lacking a lot of depth when you're only seeing just that. Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman, fantastic. She puts her own spin on it and really makes it her own. Colin Farrell as the Penguin is a standout for me. I absolutely love the little bits of humor spliced in between. It very much reminds me of the Arkham video games. Paul Dano's Riddler is also brilliant. It's fantastic. If I was to make a Batman movie, all three of these villains are perfect and exactly how they should be. Batman's the only one I kind of have an issue with. It's difficult to explain because it's done right. There's nothing that's done wrong with this Batman. It's just that when you choose to tell a version of Batman like this, it makes it really difficult to make this Batman compelling. Sometimes the film feels like Matt Reeves has this brilliant idea. He's going with it, he's making the idea, and then all of a sudden, the last second, he kind of just pulls back and goes, yeah, but maybe I, sh I shouldn't do that. And I reckon he should have kept to his guns because some of the weird neo-noir choices and narration which really make it feel like, like the long Halloween or something. At the end you think it ends but it kind of keeps going and then it turns into here's the evil plan and it just keeps going and going. It's not bad and I really really need multiple viewings and time to digest this film because I've only just come off of it and I'm kind of scrambled. I could love this movie much more in the future or I could think it wasn't that great and I'm just riding the high of what I've just seen. I don't want to go on too long but you've got a brief idea of what I think of the film. I'll leave it for the spoiler video to just talk about it and not stop. So for me the Batman as of just seeing it and the excitement I felt off of it, I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. Its biggest problem is the pacing and the runtime. It's really long, and that pacing, when it slows down, makes this film feel longer than three hours. But hey, for some people, that's a pro. Three hours of Batman? You can't complain. So that's the Batman. Have you guys seen it yet? What did you think? Without spoiling it, we can do that later. Don't worry about it. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I love Batman. That should be reason enough to subscribe, because you love Batman. Consider dropping a like, because it helps me out, helps this video get to more people like you that want to see this stuff. If you've made it all the way through to the end of the video, you're a bloody legend, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the spoiler video. Bye guys.